teaching speed and sprint technique should not be limited just to sprint drills. If you recall the maximum velocity warm-up, I labeled the series of exercises commonly called sprint drills specific mobility and coordination. Sprint drills do not directly translate to good sprint mechanics because the essential ingredient of force application to the ground is eliminated in most sprint drills. Sprint drills are good for teaching mechanical concepts. They are good for specific dynamic mobility. They train coordination in a general sense. And in some populations of young athletes or distance athletes, traditional sprint drills can serve as light plyometrics. Bush Exnator perhaps said it best, quote, while these exercises provide an opportunity to address many aspects of running mechanics, the intensities found in the exercises are not sufficient to elicit the reflexes found in competition. Thus, sprint drills do not improve running mechanics directly. Creating carryover to the event itself becomes the task of the coach, unquote. So the best and most specific sprint drill is good sprinting itself. How can we create the carryover? The single best tool I have found is the wicket drill created by Vince Anderson, now at Texas A&M. The wicket drill requires the essential ingredient of force application in order to be successful. For those of you unfamiliar with the wicket drill, I will let this example play a few times before getting into a more detailed explanation. In the wicket drill, we have initially six progressively longer spaced acceleration strides. This requires the athlete to produce force in order to develop momentum and velocity. After the six acceleration strides, we have six inch banana hurdles or wickets systematically placed at ever increasing distances. Again, the athlete must apply force in order to, co to cover ground and negotiate the, the wicket successfully. The wickets serve as a peripheral visual reminder for about proper ranges of motion at the arms and legs. The wickets give feedback to the coach while watching and to the athletes while performing. The goal is to land in the middle of each wicket. The drills are often slightly submaximal, enough that it allows for thought and awareness of mechanics by the athlete. We've talked about progression, and we will continue to talk about progression throughout this entire presentation. So how can we progress wicket drill workouts? We can do it by the number of wickets that we have the athlete run over in each repetition, or by increasing the initial spacing of the wicket drill, which then subsequently increases the spacing throughout the drill as our athletes improve. When we're training speed technique, the wicket drill can be the main session. Or when we're getting into speed development, the wicket drill may serve as a link between our specific warm up and our main sprint development session. The wicket drill is good for all athletes that run, from your sprinters to your distance runners, including your jumpers. As examples of the effectiveness of the wicket drill, I will show you two still pictures. One indicator of good sprint mechanics is to look at the positions of both knees upon ground contact. Good sprinting is indicated by knees that are exactly side by side, no spacing between the legs, at the instant of ground contact. This is a picture of one of the athletes I mentioned earlier. This was that leadoff leg in the 4x100 meter relay who has run 54 seconds on our 4x4 relay, 59 low for 400 meter hurdles, 211 on an indoor 800 meter leg of a distance medley, and run under 20 minutes for 5K in cross country. Here you can see the knees side by side. This picture is probably one frame late, as you can see the foot has flattened on the ground, so touchdown actually occurred a fraction of a second earlier, and at that exact point the two knees were perfectly side by side. 
Here is a picture of the same athlete in flight in the wicket drill. Excellent posture, very nice open ranges of motion, and synchronization of the arms and legs. Next, we will show five different examples of three different wicket drill spacings being used by a variety of athletes.